This is not clickbait. <laughs> I assure you this is not clickbait at all. This video is truly about how I made $1,000 in one week without really doing any work. And if you stay in this video, I'm gonna show you the techniques that I use to sort of help me manifest this within a week. So um, I believe this video is gonna be unlike some others that you might've watched, because other videos are like, how I manifested this amount of money in a week. And now go join my LMM, my, what is it? L M L M <laughs> marketing program or my pyramid scheme. Or all you have to do is say these mantras and like, okay. Like all that stuff works, like it's great. Um, but I'm just gonna talk about my experience. Okay, this is the universe according to Kadeem. Okay, this is me. So I found that this works for me, and because this worked for me, maybe it can work for you as well, okay? So, how I made $1,000 in a week, simply, okay? I'm gonna teach you some techniques. Let me give you some backstory at first. So, um, I was looking at a, uh, about a week before I manifested that, I was like, hmm, okay, things are okay, things are great in life, but how can I truly manifest what I want, simply. How can I manifest it? Um, I've tried different things. Again, I've tried the mantras, I've tried the prayers, I've tried the visualizations, I've tried the vision board. I mean, I've tried those YouTube videos where it's like, listen to the, what is it? The beats in your ears and the subconscious stuff. I tried it all and I said, okay. Well, there's things that I've learned in my life that have helped me in different like compartments within my life, okay? So I have um, training and technique and energy healing in a system specifically called pranic healing. Um, the gentleman teacher who founded that was uh, Master Grandmaster Choa Kaksui. He was from the Philippines, although he's Chinese, created this amazing, fantastic, wonderful system. Um, and because he is, uh, he was an engineer by trade, his system is very methodical and very scientific. So unlike other energy healing systems out there, his system is very much a cookbook approach. So for every single particular ailment, there's a specific thing that you do to work on a particular thing. Okay. So I had my training in energy healing. Thanks to Grandmaster Choa Kaksui and my first pranic killing teacher, Jeffrey Vincent Noble, right, boom. Then I did some training with David Snyder, who's fantastic, he is based out of San Diego, California, and I did a training of his in Las Vegas for two weeks, it was fantastic. So I learned some stuff from, from him, I said, okay, great. And then I said, okay, well, what are some other things that I learned from, 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 from some other teachers that I, might, that I might have internalized, whether it's stuff from um, Greg Braden or is stuff from Rocky Patel who does some essential oils or stuff from Greg Toes who does essential oils. How can I use all this stuff together to really help me enhance and increase my prosperity level? So I mix some stuff up together. Whoa, mix some stuff up together to create something that I said, well, maybe let me try this and see what happens. So one of the first things that I did was that I had to realize, okay, Kadeem, you want to manifest something in your life, right? For this particular example, it was money. You wanna manifest this, how do you do this, okay? Now, let's take a step back and realize that money does not only come from work. You always hear, you got to grind, you got to work hard, you got to make sure you're up all night, I'll sleep when I'm dead, to make money. No, that's a lie. Because there are a lot of people, okay, granted, working can get you money. However, there's a lot of people out here who are working two and three jobs and are still having a hard time making ends meet. And then there are those who are hardly working, but are making a lot of money because stuff is just working in the background for them, right? So why is that? What is it? 
somebody's working really, really hard, 18, 19 hours a day. Other person might be working like one to two hours a day, if even that. And then, of course, there are trust fund babies. They're set for life. Okay, so what is it, right, about money? Then you hear about these stories, okay, where people, they win the lottery and then they lose it all within a few years. And then they become broke or poor again, right? So what is it? Is it truly that money equates to something? We think that money equates to, you know, getting what you want, you know, to doing the things that you really want to do. But it really doesn't if you're not able to vibrate at the frequency of having an abundance of money and realizing that money, again, as I mentioned, can come from anywhere. It can come from prize. It can come from inheritance. It can come from work. It can come from you finding it. I heard a story about someone that found $12,000 in a paper bag on the floor in the street in New York City. Yes, you can find money anywhere, okay? It does exist. So, for me, I had to separate the fact that making money, earning money does not always come from work. So for me, I was like, okay, well, let me separate that and realize, okay, is it that I want a particular job that's going to give me a certain amount of money or do I just want to vibrate at the level of having money? And what does the money do for me? What is the intention of having the money? So once I figured out my intention, okay, I want to have money. Why? Because I'm going to have a certain sense of financial freedom, a certain sense of financial stability, and be able to have fun, right? Do fun things. Take myself out. Enjoy life. Shake my tail feather when I go to the club, right? There are certain things that I really would like to do with this money that it affords me. So for me, it was, okay, what is the intention? Number one, behind me, Wanting the money. That was the first thing I had to figure out. Okay. Write down my intention. Get that together. Boom. That was step one. Step two, then I had to say to myself, okay, well, what do you do now? Okay. So what do you do? So you set your intention. Okay. And now you put certain things into practice. So whether it's pursuing a particular job, whether it's applications, interviewing, okay, whether it's doing your side project, your hustle, trying to make money out of that, okay, so for me, it was like, okay, well, I have these things that I'm doing, now I'm going to do the things, and then let it go, that was it, do the things, and then let it go, because I've realized sometimes, sometimes for myself, it's like, if I'm doing something, I don't see a result right away, you know, I need to keep taking action. You know, if that action does not produce a result, I need to take keep taking action on that action so that the action produces in a result of action. And it was a consistent, a consistent going when I said, okay, Kadeem, you need to step back from this. Okay, you're gonna hear myself talking, talk about myself in the third person consistently because I'm separating myself from this particular <laughs> event and these events, right? So... I needed to step back from it and say, okay, Kadeem, you need to take the action and then let it go. It's almost like, you know, when you're cooking something, you know, you put it in the oven, the microwave. Do you keep opening the microwave or the oven every five seconds to see if it's done? Five seconds, okay. Is it done? Five seconds, is it done? You keep doing that the result in this case is the food will never get cooked. You have to do the work, put it in the oven, put it in the microwave, and then let it go. You know, let the time pass until either the timer goes off or you hear the, the beep, beep, beep from the microwave until you know it's done, right? You can't keep looking in the oven, in the microwave for your thing. You have to do the action, close the door, the door. You know I'm from New York. The door. Close the door, the door, and then let it go. That's it. So I said, okay, I need to do the action and then let it go. So that was step two for me, letting it go. So first, set the intention. Then second, whatever I was going to do, let it go. Second for me. So those are the two things I did so far. So... 
The other stuff I'm going to be talking about is about certain techniques that I did, specific techniques that I did that were super helpful and helped me manifest $1,000 in a week. So one technique that I did uh, going based off of my energy healing practices was I, well, it's actually a mixture of different, it's actually a mixture really of pranic healing and really even some hypnotherapy um, stuff. So, but I, I received the, this specific technique from pranic healing. So you, you can close your eyes, you know, imagine on a white, you know, imagine yourself in front of a blank whiteboard, okay? And then you throw up any and anything on that whiteboard that represents lack, not having enough, being poor, being broke, anything anybody said to you, you're not good enough, uh, money doesn't grow on trees, we can't afford it. You know, maybe growing up you heard that we can't afford it. You know, uh, money doesn't grow on trees, I'm not an ATM, you know, I'm not built for money. All those things have an effect on us in our adult life. So, I said, okay. So I had to throw up everything on the whiteboard. I imagined whatever all those things were. And then I imagined my dominant hand, my dominant one for me is my right hand. Imagine my dominant hand as lightning, the color of lightning, like that really brilliant electric violet light, right? Imagine my hand as that color. And then imagine just erasing all of that negative, grimy, disgusting stuff about not having enough, but not, you know, about having lack, about all that stuff. Erase, 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 disintegrate, 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 erase, erase, erase. So I did that a few times. <clears throat> and even doing it now, I felt some stuff release. I did I did that a few times, you know, and then every time I was done, I have a mixture that I create that I created of um like alcohol. Um, lavender oil, frankincense oil, tea tree oil. And I would spray that on my hands to cleanse up my hands because as you know, you're erasing things, you know, I'm erasing the stuff off the board. I'm erasing it, erasing it. These are the things that no longer serve me, disintegrate, disintegrate, disintegrate. With this electric violet, sometimes there are things on my hands I sometimes, sometimes might feel contamination on my hands. Okay, so I spray, right? If you don't have any oil, essential oils to use, you can just maybe run your hands under some soap and water, you know, or some salt. You know, salt is deeply cleansing, salt and water, you know, to cleanse your hands. Or you can just do like this. Just clapping. This neutralizes, right, the energy. Clapping, 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 clapping. Boom. Okay. You relax. Okay. And then you think about anything else that makes you think about lack not having enough, not being good enough, not having enough money to do whatever, not having enough resources to do whatever. Think about all that stuff. Again, throw it up on, on that whiteboard. Again, dominant hand, electric violet, lightning, and you erase. Erase, disintegrate, erase. You can literally say, as you're doing it, erase, erase, disintegrate, disintegrate, erase, erase, erase. Again, do that, do that. You know, ch -ch -ch spray or... I feel, like, I feel like I'm like a seal and like one of those like aquariums. Okay, so you clap or you put on some salt, you know, salt water, cleanse your hands with, with some salt water. Okay, so you do that like three or four times. Okay, and then any, you can also say, you know, anything that might be subconscious, you know, anything that I can't think about right now, but any subconscious stuff, throw it up on the whiteboard. And then again, erase, disintegrate, disintegrate, erase, clean, 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 disintegrate, disintegrate, erase completely, deeply, thoroughly, erase. Okay, again, same thing. Right? Or again, spray. Okay? So that was the first thing I did because, you know, all these gurus and teachers and coaches say, mantras, you got to fill yourself with mantras, you got to fill yourself with energy. That's nice. But as David Snyder said, it's almost like there are people out here who are trying to catapult themselves with a rocket jet on their back, but there's like an 100 pound anchor attached to their leg. And they really can't take off. Wait, well, yeah. You really can't take off until you really cut that 100 pound anchor or one ton anchor or two ton anchor. Once you cut that off, then you take off like a rocket. But that weight that ton, those pounds that's holding you back are the subconscious things that are, you know, were told to you when you were younger, 
feelings or thoughts of not being good enough and not having enough, you know, once you're able to let that go and release that, then you can take off. So once you clean stuff up, then you can fill yourself with the mantras and prosperity stuff and all that stuff. So, you know, this stuff actually works for relationships, really any aspect of your life, really. Think about things that you want, you know, but any feelings or thoughts attached to something that um, makes you think you're not good enough. So, for example, relationships, it might be, I feel like I'm not pretty, I'm not gorgeous, I'm not sexy, you know, I was so younger. Who do you think you are? You know, you're ugly, you know, maybe seeing your parents grow up, they didn't have a good relationship, you know, whatever it is, you can throw that stuff on the whiteboard, erase, erase, disintegrate, disintegrate, erase completely, deeply, thoroughly, erase, erase, erase. I'm going to add another part to it, erase deeply, thoroughly, and then, again, with the same lightning, you're going to cut. Imagine your hand is like an axe, like a sword. Again, with that same electric violet, cut, cut, disintegrate, cut, disintegrate, cut, disintegrate, any attachments to that also. Because we have these cords attached to us, and I'm gonna do this, my seal hands. Okay, because we have these cords attached to us. Okay, these cords to other people, to events, to situations. And if we don't let those cords go, those things continue to drain us of our energy consistently. You know, there are some cores that we want that are good, that, you know, that are positive, you know, cores to people that we love, right? And those cores can, you know, need to be cleansed from time to time. But there are cores that we don't necessarily want attached to us. Like if you work in, let's say, customer service, you don't want all these cores attached to you from all the customers that you've been working with over the day, right? Or if you work in education, you don't want the cores to all the kids, you know, <laughs> Attached to you because when you go home, you're going to be taking their energy home literally and you don't want to do that. It's always good when you first come home, disconnect, cut, disintegrate, cut, disintegrate. And even when you're when you're living, especially in the city, but if you're doing any job where you go out or you even go out for the day, go to the mall, whatever, wherever you go in the day, you should always, when you come home, disconnect yourself because you never know the thoughts, the emotions the intentions that people are throwing at you on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Someone might look at you and go, ooh, they sexy. That's a cord attachment. Very thin, very small, but still a cord attachment, right? So it's always good to cut those cords every day. Consistently, you know, when you come home, cut those cords, disintegrate, again, electric violet, the color of lightning, cut, disintegrate, cut, disintegrate, cut, disintegrate from all corners, cut, disintegrate, you know, and then, Again, the spray, if you want a bottle of spray also, let me know, send me a DM. I create the sprays, I think they're great. People that I give the sprays to, they think they're great. Anyway, not telling myself, trying to help you. Okay, so cleaning, right? Before you charge yourself with anything, you gotta clean. So after I did that a few times, the method of the whiteboard and then disconnected the stuff, you know, disconnect, disconnect, disconnect. And, and, and as I'm talking to you, I'm also working with myself as I'm talking because I'm realizing, oh, there's other stuff here that needs to be cleaned up. So, boom. After that, then you can fill yourself up with good stuff. So a suggestion for me is that you check out Master Choa Kaksui's Meditation on Prosperity. So type in Meditation on Prosperity, Master Choa, C-H-O, Kak, uh, not in that way, you nasties. K O K, <laughs> and then Sui S U I. Okay, so Grandmaster Choa Kak Sui's Meditation on Prosperity. Okay, check that out. Get that. You can read that consistently. Uh, every day. That's helpful. I believe I posted it also, um, on my Facebook and on my Instagram, so you can check that out. Kadeem one. All like one word. Kadeem one, check that out. Facebook, Instagram, it's there. I think that's like one of the first posts that I kind of post. So I'm gonna have to kind of scroll through. But check that out. Grandmaster Choa Kaksui's Meditation on Prosperity. It's amazing. It's great. You can read that. That's one technique. That's one thing you can do to fill yourself up, right? Something else you can do to fill yourself up is say these following mantras. So after you do all that stuff, say 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 the following mantras. You know, uh, money flows to me like a river. Money flows to me like a river. Money flows to me like a river. 
Making money is easy. Making money is easy. Making money is easy. Uh, money rains in me like a waterfall. Money rains in me like a waterfall. Money rains in me like a waterfall. Okay? Those are good ones to use for money. But again, this can work for anything, right? Relationships, health, if you're looking towards career, job, you know, um, relationships flow to me like a river. Mm. Loving relationships. Because you can be in a relationship and have it be horrible. Loving relationships flow to me like a river, okay? You can do that, right? So those mantras, those are great. Mantras are great. Mantras are great. The meditation and prosperity is great. Um, but then, so those are the things that I used, but there was something that I used that I felt was super helpful and super powerful for me. Okay, that was separate from mantras and separate from the meditation that I felt was super helpful for me. So, by the way, um, I have a series on the seven keys to prosperity. Check it out. That is on my Instagram and on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, check that out because I actually go through the technique on like the cleansing the board technique that I just mentioned, the whiteboard technique. That's on there. I go through that in detail so you can do it with me. And I sort of help you and guide you through that process. And then I also have another one um, on there also about like mantras and sort of filling yourself up with prosperity energies. So check those out. Those are great. All right. So one thing that was super helpful for me was trying to match my vibration to what I want. And I know sometimes when people talk about talk about vibration, it's like, what is that? What's like, what's like vibration? Essentially is vibration is essentially a feeling. It's just a feeling. And having that feeling be attached to you consistently so that that feeling essentially goes deep into your subconscious, into your mind, so that you can bring forth what you want. Um, That was a burp, by the way. I'm sorry. I burped. I just finished eating food. Um, But um, it is said that things that are done between 50 and 50, 52 times go deep into the subconscious. 50 to 52 times. So if you're doing those mantras and stuff and you're doing like once a day and that's it, that's not really having a strong effect, okay? 50 to 52 times. You know those, um, some people, um, uh, specifically Catholics, Tend to have the rosary beads, you know the beads that these. It's like a kind of like a chain. It looks like a necklace or a chain, but it's not. It's really it's really like pr- prayer beads essentially. And there are uh, like there's like there's ten rows of like smaller beads, and there's fifty of them. And then there's like bigger beads. I think there's like four or five bigger beads like around around that. But each of those smaller beads, they're pretty much saying the same prayer for every small bead. So the question is, why are there 50 small beads? Why are there not 60? Why is there not 20? See, all these things that we think, oh, you know, religion, spirituality, it seems to be this random thing. It's not, y'all, it's a science. This stuff is a science. Somebody or somebody's new, oh, if we have people say stuff 50 times the same way over and over again, some magic happens. They didn't call it subconscious back then, but we know now it's a subconscious. So doing or saying something 50 to 52 times goes deep into the subconscious. So if you really want a mantra to really take off for you, 50 to 52 times per day. Have it go deep into the subconscious, okay? So, we breathe um, about, I think the the average is about 16 times per minute, okay? We breathe about, about 16 times per minute. So, if you really want, so there's the next exercise that I'm going to teach you or tell you about. If you really want the vibration to stick for as long as possible. You know that you breathe 16 16 times per minute 
and knowing that it takes at least 50 to 52 times for something to get into the subconscious for it to become a real thing is to do an exercise like this, filling up your aura, your biofield, yourself, filling yourself up with this particular thing I'm going to teach you. You got to do it for four minutes, okay? So you breathe in, breathe out 16 times, again, per minute. If you just did it for three minutes, that's like, what's that, 16 times three. I think that's like, 48, maybe 46, 48, maybe. I'm doing fast math, okay? No calculator. Don't, don't come for my life. Don't come for my life. Okay, that might be wrong. Okay, I might be wrong. But <laughs> if you breathe, I would say at least three and a half minutes, okay? But four minutes is good enough. But if you breathe in and out, okay, for at least, at least three and a half minutes, okay, it'll get you to at least 50, at least 50 breaths. Okay, and it gets to at least 50 breaths consistently doing something while you're focusing on this particular thing. All right, so the next thing that I did, which is super helpful, again, was vibrating at this particular level. So I'm gonna talk about vibration because I studied again with David Snyder in Vegas. He really helped uh, the participants really focus on and feel the vibration of different things, whether it's happiness, love, um, it was really emotion, sadness, anger. We're able to tap into those emotions and those feelings without necessarily thinking about a particular incident. But he really helped us sort of figure that out. But so I said, okay, well, maybe I can figure that out in abundance. And like getting what I want in terms of manifesting what I want. So I said, okay, what would the vibration of feeling abundant be and having more than enough be and having, uh, you know, manifesting certain money into my life. So that's what I did. And I sat, you know, and I just set a timer for, for four minutes, sat, and then imagined, you know, feeling that whatever that vibration was of abundance. Now, I know that might be really like abstract. How do I match a vibration of abundance? So a good way to do it is to visualize but to and again people talk about visualization visualization yeah but people not talk about doing visualization for four minutes they say visualize you visualize yourself it feels so good okay and then you come back people not talking about doing visualization for, for four minutes so visualize 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 for four minutes but visualize the end result okay so again i'm talking specifically for this about money but you could talk about this for anything relationships again career job whatever House, manifesting a house. Okay, four minutes. Truly sit with yourself and imagine seeing yourself with a lot of money. Okay, don't see yourself making the money or gathering the money. See yourself with the money already in your account. See yourself doing the things already with the money. What would you do with the money if you had it? Okay, and this goes again goes with anything. What would you do if you had the perfect loving relationship? What would you do with the person? How would you act? How would you be? Where would you go? Okay, so the key is to focus on the end result of whatever that is. So focus on the end result. See you having it, and just truly sit in those feelings for four minutes, undisturbed. That's a good way to fill yourself with these energies that you desire. Okay? So, that's that. And then, you know, I would say something like this you can do every day. Where you can do the cleansing, the bore technique, filling yourself with the thoughts, feelings every day, the visualization every day for four minutes. You can do that every day. So, I realized for me, um, when I did these particular techniques, I only did them, I did them once, actually. I did them once. Um, and it took about a week for me to manifest $1,000 within a week. Okay, so now you're probably wondering, so how did you manifest it? How did the money come in? Where did it come in from? Um, so, this was many years ago after I graduated college. Um, after I graduated college, 
you know, I wasn't working at the time because I was okay. I just left college. What, what am I going to do? And, you know, I was a, I still am, a choreographer, dancer, actor by trade. That's sort of what I went to, went to high school for. Went to a specialized high school for that, LaGuardia High School, LAG, right? Then went to a college, Muhlenberg College, to study theater and dance. So that was my thing, right? It was theater and dance. So for me, I was like, okay, uh, what am I doing now <laughs> for work? <laughs> Where this money going to come from? So granted, I mean, I did, you know, get gigs and stuff here and there. But, you know, the thing about the gig life is that it's like consistent gigs. So once you get a gig, that gig might last, unless you're doing Broadway, might last for a few weeks, maybe a month or two, and then that's it. Then the gig is over, you know? Or some gigs aren't like full time. Some gigs are part time. Maybe you're doing, you know, you were in a rehearsal two or three times a week. Got a performance, you know, five, six times, and that's it. It's over, you know? So for those that, you know, do like Broadway, where they're, you know, in rehearsals consistently, where they're performing eight shows a week, which is really intense, um, you know, they kind of have jobs for an extended period of time un- until the show closes or until they leave and go somewhere else, you know? So once you're, once you become, you know, this, do this stuff with the gig life, whether it's a performing artist, whether it's someone in technology, graphic design, I mean, the gig life, it can be difficult because unlike a nine to five, you know, you're going from one gig to the other, you know? So anyway, that's another dis- discourse from another time. But I said, okay, well, um, I gotta, gotta do something. So what I did was I signed up for some of these, um, uh, like market research focus groups, which are great. P.S. I would say, if you're trying to manifest some quick money, you might want to Google like wherever you are. Uh, I'm based in New York city, but if you're in, I don't know, Austin, Texas or LA, you know, Google search LA market research or uh, Austin um, paid focus groups, you know, because there are these focus groups you go to and they pay you for your time, you know, to answer questions about a particular thing, particular topic, a particular software, particular product, you know, so it was great. So I signed up for those things um, for some of them after I graduated college, you know, when I got, you know, a few uh, different calls to like come in and test some stuff out and get paid for. I think the most I got paid at once for going to a focus group, I want to say it was $300, like an hour and a half, you know, so it's, you know, it's great. So, you know, I haven't been thinking about that stuff for some time, but it just so happens that like about a week after I did my exercises, like, yeah, it was like about a week. Yeah. Maybe like six days, but it's a week. Okay. After the, after I did my exercises, it's like, I got these phone calls from like different agencies were like, Hey, we saw your profile. We know it's been a while, you know, but we'd be willing to come in and do a focus group. I'm like, Oh, sure. You know? So I did three focus groups <laughs> within a week and all three of them, um, all of them together, you know, together equaled six hours of just work, not work, but six hours of answering questions and looking at, you know, looking at advertisements, trying to figure out, okay, is this, this is good for the company. This is not good for the company. You know, what does the product say? What do you think the software says? How does it speak to you in your life? I did six hours of that. And I got $900. So I was like, Hmm. Okay. And again, this is, this is like out the blue. I've never gotten that much before within a week (laughs) from doing these. And I was like, well, this is kind of cool. That was one way. And then it just so happened that my family was trying to plan a reunion, you know, for our family to get get together. I'm going to burp again. Excuse me. That was a good one. It tastes like fish. Okay. (laughs) Um, My family was going to get together. We were going to get together for a reunion. And uh, just happened that I paid my registration fee a few months back. The reunion all of a sudden got canceled because people were not doing their stuff to register and to really like, you know, be committed to it. So I got a refund. That was $100. And that was the same week I got paid from this focus groups. So within that week, I manifested 
$1,000. And this is six days after I did those techniques that I told you. About erasing the whiteboard, you know, sitting in the visualizations, you know, or the vibration of what it is that I wanted. Yeah. You know, is it that easy? Maybe. I think so. I think it is. Because, again, we believe spirituality, and I'm saying that in a very broad, general sense, because spirituality is really connected to everything, <laughs> truly. Because everything is energy, and spirituality deals with higher vibrations of energy. So, you know, when you really tap into energy, into the energy of the planet, and the energy of who we are and what we do, we're all connected. And I believe that everything truly is a science. But... We've lost the science over the years due to, due to technology and due to us using this brain opposed to this brain, okay? We have a <laughs> brain in our heart. There are 40, something called sensory neurites. There are 40,000 sensory neurites in the heart. And these sensory neurites act, feel, and think separately of the brain. There's science out there. You go to heartmath.org. You want to check this out. There's science out there that says that the heart, the heart, the physical heart, radiates six feet around us in diameter. It radiates an energy, a pulse, a field, an energetic field of six feet in diameter. And that six feet is only because that's how far their technology can truly sense it. But they believe that it goes beyond six feet. But but their technology only is only able to read up to six feet. You know? So I believe that everything is a science and that there are certain monks and great ones of our previous days from Jesus to Buddha and all the other great ones that are fantastic. And they knew the science internally, but of course really can't reveal it to the world because people will probably take advantage of it, right? They knew the science of it, of spirituality, of tapping into these things. But over the years, you know, it got hidden, it got lost due to other things happening in our society and our world. So this stuff is a science. And for some people that's like, oh, spirituality, energy, all that stuff is quack. Although I believe because you're, watch you're watching this, so you, I think you believe in in the stuff that might be considered woo-woo, but we know it's not. It's a science and everything is connected. Is that, you know, those times where you uh, think about someone and within that moment or that second, they call or text you. What, what is that? Right? That's truly us being connected. Truly. Right? You think about someone, then they call you. How... People might say, how weird is that? It's not weird. It's because we are connected. You can call someone up on the cell phone, dial a number, call them, call them up on the cell phone. Their cell phone will ring. They might be across the world. It'll ring and they pick up the phone. Hello? There's no wire attached at all. It's all waves. It's all these waves. Where do you think all that stuff came from? It mimics us. It mimics our internal scientific energetic selves. There's a, a law in science called the law of conservation of mass. Essentially, that means that nothing ever dies or is created. Everything is just transformed. Nothing ever dies or is created. Everything just transforms. That's the case with water. Water is a liquid. It can turn to a solid when it's iced. It can turn to a gas when it's evaporated. Nothing is created or dies, it just transforms. So where do you think we go? When we transition, when we pass on, the physical body is no longer here, but we have to go somewhere because it's based in science. It's based in science. Nothing ever dies or is created, it just transforms. The same case with, with what you want to manifest, it's already out there. It's already out there. You just have to bring it into you. So hopefully the things that I taught you can help you in some sort of way. That's it.
That's all I have for today. This is a long video. This is my longest one to date. But I had some stuff to share and I feel like I had to share it because it was my duty to share it. So have a good day. Have any questions or comments, type it down below. DM me, follow me, like me, Kadeem1, blah, 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 social media. I'm on every single outlet, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat. I'm there. Kadeem, everything is Kadeem1. One word, K-A-D-E-E-M-O-N-E. Also, Kadeem1.com. Thank you so much. Have an amazing day. Take care. Bye-bye.